Welcome back. Today, we're going to look at common errors with pointers and references and file I.O. Common errors with pointers and references. So one of the uh, common errors with pointers and references is um, is in the, um, you know, here we have a function prototype, and it takes a pointer. And here we see the function as well. It takes a pointer. And, you, and if you ever get this compile error, cannot convert parameter 1 from int to int. It, it, it may occur when you call a, f a function that takes a pointer and forget to put the ampersand operator. So, you know, in this instance, if we declared our function as requiring pointers, then when we call it, remember, with pointers, when you call the function, you have to have an ampersand. Another error you can see is uh, cannot convert parameter 1 from int asterisk to int ampersand. And often when you see these errors, you often, you know, you, you just kind of say, oh, there's an error, and you just bypass reading them. Make sure you read the error. And when you read these in C++, you really need to look at the symbology because this is can't convert from a pointer to a reference. And so that might occur when you have a function that's defined that takes a reference. So you can see these take a reference. And when you call it, you try to pass in an address. Well, if you pass in an address, you can see that's an address to an int. Can't convert an address to an int to a reference to an int. And so remember, when you pass in a reference, you don't use the ampersand. So that will be the common errors you have with pointers and references, is if you use a reference, you'll, you know, if you're used to using pointers, you'll start putting ampersands in your function call, and that'll mess it up. And vice versa with pointers, you'll do the opposite. Another error you can get is compiler error, illegal indirection. So let's say we have, um, we're trying to see an into the dereference pointers for px and py. And we can see that, you know, well, that makes sense because we are using pointers. And you have a good function call where you're passing the address. But um, what you might not have done is when you define the function, you might have forgotten to put the asterisks here. And so if you forgot to put the asterisks here, that's when you get that illegal indirection. You can't, and basically it's saying you can't dereference an int. You can dereference a pointer to an int, but you can't dereference an int. And even though here we named it px, which implies this is a pointer, without the asterisks in here, then uh, that's not really a pointer. Some properties associated with uh, variables. So your variables have data type, number of bytes reserved, name, value, and address. Um, so the data type establishes what kind of da data will be uh, stored. The number of bytes is dependent on the data type. So that kind of tells you, if you say double, you know how many bytes are going to be used. And then the name is the identifier that the uh, program will use to, uh, to reference you know, that space and memory that will be reserved at runtime. The value is what's actually stored in the variable, and the address is the actual address. And realize, you don't get the address until the program actually runs. Uh, remember that with, prop, with uh, uh, pointers and references are designed to hold hexadecimal addresses, and a pointer is declared using the, aster the, the asterisk, and a reference is declared using the ampersand. And with uh, doing a call by reference using pointers, a variable's address is assigned explicitly into the pointer by using the ampersand address. So, you know, when we have a pointers, we have to put these, you have to put pointers everywhere in the function definition and the function prototype. And then in main, when you call it, you got to use the ampersand to say that you're passing an address. But with references, um, it does all that implicitly. So you don't have, all you have to do is put the ampersand sign in the function prototype and the function definition, and you don't have to worry about it anywhere else. Um, some more properties with uh, associated with variables. Um, a pointer impaired with the indirection operator accesses the data. So here you can see in the reference when we're using it, um, you know, we see into these references, we just use the variable names. But with pointers, we have to dereference the pointer with the asterisk when we're using it. So uh, for writing to a file, we're going to use something called the ifstream and ofstream class. 
The uh, IF stream contains the necessary functions for opening and reading data from the files, and the OF stream class contains what you need to write to um, write to a file. So we're going to IF stream to read to to read from a file and OF stream output stream to write to a file. And because they're stream classes, they're going to work exactly the same way C, C out and C in works. So you know you've already learned to uh, use uh, C out and C in. Um, and so you know you 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 know most of what you need to use uh, f to write to a file on the hard drive. And why do we want to write to a file in the hard drive? Well, you know, when you turn off your program, anything that's in variable memory will just go away. If you want to preserve information from one run of your program to the next, you need to be able to write to the hard drive. And file and writing to a file is one way of doing that. So here's an example of writing to a file. And it's it's probably good to have something in this save file function, we have a Boolean that that will indicate whether or not the file was successfully saved. And so we're going to start off by declaring a file OK Boolean. And we're going to assume that initially, well, you know, it probably will be at work. So we'll assign true to our file OK variable. Then what we'll do is we have to declare an OF stream output file. And so in order to use the um, OF stream library, you must include the F stream library in your program. So you have an include statement for F stream. And then once we open up the output file, and we do that by saying open output file, and we have to pass in a string, which is the file name. This is either just a file name if the file is in the same directory as the program that's running it is, is in, or you have to put in a, a file name with a, with a full path in order to get there. So this string is just the name of the file. The open command will open up that file and then we can use the isOpen method of the OF uh, stream class in order to check to see if this output file is open. If the output file is open, we can then start writing to it. And you can see that this looks very much like a C out uh, command. And so writing to a file is essentially exactly the same as writing to C out. But instead of using C out, we're using the name of our OF stream object, which in this case we named it output file. So we're writing to this output file. This will then write all this information to whatever file name we passed in. And then once we're done writing to the file, we always want to close the file as soon as possible in order to minimize the number of amount of time that a file is open. It's a good idea to do that right away uh, because the operating system can only open so many files at a time. And then also, if something else needs to read from that file, no, nothing else can open that file until we close. So try to close your files right away. And that's what this close command does. Now, if we couldn't open the file, what will happen is this else statement will set file OK to false, and then we return file OK to indicate to the to the user calling this save file function whether or not the the, the save file worked, and they can then read that and see if they need to display an error message to the to the user. To read from the file, it's kind of the um, the uh, the same sort of thing. We, you know, here we have a function that's been written to read a file, and it, this one returns a string, which is whatever it read from the file. And uh, so you pass in a file name, and uh, here we uh, we create an IF stream object, a, uh, and that's what that's our input file. That's what we're going to read from, and then we create a string to hold a line, and then a string for full text. And we're going to initialize full text to an empty string. That's Two double quotes next to each other is an empty string. And what that means is that if we can't read it, what the user will get back from read file is just the empty string, and they'll know that we weren't able to read anything from that file. So here we ha we take our input file, and just like we opened our out output file, we have to open our input file using the file name uh, that was passed in. And that file name, again, can be either a... a um, a uh, uh, file name with a full path to indicate exactly where it is on the hard drive, or if it's just a, a file name, it'll be referenced to wherever this executable uh, program is in the directory. And so here we check to see if we're able to open the file. If we weren't able to, we'll, we'll send out an error message. But if we are able to open the file, we will do a while loop in order and use getLine to 
to get our lines from the input file. So the get line function works just like get line C in and you know some variable name. This is exactly the same get line function. The only difference is that rather than using C in on this first parameter, our first parameter is going to be the IF, the input file. And so we're going to read from the in, a line from the input file and not a line from you know the keyboard. So if we do get a line and realize when you get line returns a string, the an empty string would 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 evaluate in a boolean context as false. But if we get anything in this line, then that will evaluate as true. So that's why this while will work as long as it's getting able to get lines from the input file, our while will will get the line. And so what we're doing is we're trying to get a line from the input file. If we succeed, we're then adding the line to full text. This is the plus equal operator, the accumulation operator, which is the same as saying full text equals full text plus line plus uh, this this slash n. But it's a it's a little bit simpler and clearer to see if we use plus equals, which just means that all this will be added to whatever's currently in full text. So as we keep looping through this, we're just going to keep accumulating the lines plus a carriage return at the end of the line onto full text. And eventually full text will have whatever was in that file. And then afterwards, the end, we return full text as the output of read file. So read file will go read that file and bring in the full text. So you know you could use this function uh, to read a file. So at this point, I recommend you complete the file IO demo, and that will walk you through actually doing a whole uh, file input. And um, that concludes what we looked at today. Thank you very much.